Hello and welcome back to another video. I thought it would be such a cool idea if I make a video kind of wrapping up this year in AOE 3 DE uh, and just going over uh, anything notable that, that's happened this year in the community, uh, all the different patches, all the different tournaments as well, uh, and just kind of give like a brief kind of rundown slash overview um, of what's happened. I think it'll just be really, really great to look back on the year we've had and uh, yeah, and maybe look towards uh, next year in 2024. Um, so I thought we would start with all the tournaments that's happened. Um, so first off, at the beginning of the year, we had uh, the World Cup. So this was a 3v3 tournament. Um, and how it was kind of laid out was you had regional qualifiers, and then the winner of that kind of regional uh, bracket then goes on to verse the rest of the world. So I think there were four regions. Um, that was... The Americas, Europe, Africa, and Asia, and then Oceania. I think that's what it was. Could be wrong. Um, but anyway, it was a great event. It got a lot of the community involved um, and a lot of players as well. I think there were like 50 to 60 players being a, a big team event. Um, so I, I took part in this as well. Um, I'm from Australia, obviously. So uh, the Oceania uh, kind of region. Uh, it ended up getting taken out by uh, Prince and his team. So where are they here? So yeah, that's Prince, uh, Daniel, also a sturdy table, uh, and Julian. So, uh, oh yeah, you can see the different groups here. So America, Europe and Africa, uh, Asia, Oceania. I'm forgetting one. Oh well. Um, there's only three there for some reason. But, uh, I, oh, maybe it was only three regions. I think it was only three regions. Okay. So, anyway, you can see all the different players that uh, that took part. And, uh, yeah, so Prince and his team ended up taking that one. So, yeah, that was a great event. Had a $300 prize pool, which is pretty good for a team event. Um, yeah, we'll uh, move on to the next one. So, we also had uh, this fourth season of the ESOC Premier League, which was the first time I kind of... Uh, not really participated. I think I casted a few games and I, um, I, I joined in on watching a lot of the games. But uh, it's a great event in that it's like a team event, but it's one v one focused. Um, and it's like a play all five, and uh, the amount of games you win in that play all five uh contributes to your team's total. So I think that's teams of five. Um, and you play against other teams in a one v one format, and however many. Uh, 1v1s you win goes to like your team's total uh, and they have I think it's about three weeks and uh, you face up against other teams and it was great uh, and I think uh, it was the Blockhouse Boomers that ended up taking it um, it was only really going to be between Blockhouse Boomers and Karusi Management um, I believe but some really great games the one that I remember so vividly um, was Kaiser Klein versus Revnak on what map was it? Is it here? Uh, Nile Valley. Yeah, so I was on this map, and uh, I don't want to spoil it, but I'm pretty sure it's on the ESOC YouTube channel. Go watch it. It's a great series. And uh, yeah, that game on Nile Valley was just iconic. Um, but yeah, this was really, really fun event. I hope to see this again next year. Um, and yeah, you can read up about it. Um, on the Liquipedia page. So we're gonna move on to the next tournament that happens, which was the ESOC Challengers League. And uh, how this was different to the ESOC Premier League, it's uh, the exact same kind of tournament format, but uh, instead of kind of pro players taking part, it's focusing on more of the up and coming players. So like maybe like the 1500 ELO to 1900, 2000 ELO range. Um, although we did have a lot of really high ranks players sign up anyway. Um, but I, I took part in this, it was really fun. Uh, I didn't play very well, cause I think I was, it was during my exam season. So uh, yeah, I literally did. I only played my uh, tournament games for the, like during the two weeks that I was playing um, or the three weeks. So yeah, I, I didn't personally do very well, but uh, I was part of the new world challenges and uh, that was really fun. And the Gargarians ended up uh, taking this one uh, as GUA predicted uh, in the first season. This is season two. Um, so yeah, you can go check this out uh, on ESOC, this announcement. 
And the next tournament was uh, Free Food Party's Beat the Boss 2, so the second round of this tournament. And this is another really cool tournament. It's uh, kind of like a 1v1 format. Um, you just uh, play off against uh, other players until in like a round of 16, round of 8, uh, quarterfinals, finals, um, just like the usual tournament format. But then uh, the, la the person who wins has the opportunity to verse like a final boss stage, which is some like uh, high level pro um, kind of the focus of beat the boss is it's that like 1700 elo to 2000 elo range so you, you, you're good at the game but uh, you're not that like super pro level so if you win you get the opportunity to play against like a, a really good pro and uh, if you take a single game off the pro I think you earn an extra prize pool or something like that so I took part in this as well uh, I beat I didn't beat Lionheart I took a game off Lionheart he did end up um, beating me and he ended up actually winning the whole thing and beat the boss as well uh which i think was julian um was the boss but yeah really fun event uh i hope to see this come back as well uh got lots of people involved from all around the world uh so yeah and it did have a prize pool as well so 300 uh which went to lionheart uh next up we have i know it's not advertised here but this is the caverna combat uh brackets uh so this is the second round of his kind of uh, tournament and it was focused on I think all players below like 1600 elo level um, and so if you're below that elo you could sign up and uh, we had a lot of signups uh, I think there was about 50 to 60 people that that signed up yeah so 32 different brackets so yeah 64 people signed up which is incredible um, had a pretty big prize pool as well I think it was about like like $250, $300, something like that. I contributed, I sponsored it as well, because uh, I think it's just great for the lower level players to have tournaments as well. I was a lower level player once, still kind of am. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a pro. Um, but yeah, uh, Ravidon ended up taking this one out against Mr. Merlin, who's uh, iconic in the AOE 3 and in particularly AOE 4 community. Um, so yeah, this was just a great event. Caverna streamed all of it. I'm pretty sure they're all on his YouTube. I'll try to link a lot of these links to the different players, like Twitches and YouTubes down below and all these other different links. But uh, yeah, this was a great event and uh, I hope Caverna will do it next year. Uh, and a tournament that's actually just concluded, uh, ESOC Summer Championship 2023. This, I think, ended up about a, a month ago. Uh, Unger's, Unger's ended up taking the win on this one. Um, most improved player of 2021, I think he is, um, taking the win on this one against Julian, who I think was actually the fan favorite. Everyone thought Julian was going to win. Julian was streaming so much before this kind of finals, and uh, he was looking super strong. He was continuously taking games against Unger's and, like, Revnak and uh, Kaiser. So, yeah, it was... It was not a shock that Unger's won, but uh, I think people weren't expecting it. Um, but yeah, nice prize pool of $500 split between the top four there. Uh, I participated. I did horrible. Um, but uh, yeah, this was another good tournament. Uh, and I also wanted to just give a shout out to all the show matches that happened this year. Look at all these show matches. Um all having like very small prize pools as show, show matches usually do. Um, but you can see we've kind of improved a lot on past years in our show match kind of uh, game. I, I, I'm going to call this year the year of the show matches for uh, AOE 3 kind of prized events. Uh, a lot of them you can see uh, were sponsored by Shake. Um, he did this kind of really cool format where he would put 50 of his own dollars up on the line and he'd play against like another member of the community and if the the other person won great they get the money if he wins he just keeps his own cash um so he did a lot of these events and they were really fun to watch i think i casted one of two, one or two um also shout out to Wichi who who's doing his big boy brawl um who i think it's like ten dollars for a game you win so it's not like a best of it's a play all five i think he does and if you win a game you, you win money which is great uh, so he's been doing that and also I had one more oh yeah Smackdown so Lionheart's uh, Smackdown series he's only done it two or three times I think 
Um, and I asked him actually today, like, are you going to do another one? And he's like, yeah, I got one um, on the way. So he was also in the show match kind of scene. Um, yeah, casting some of those games. Uh, yeah, so lots of show matches this year. It was really fun to see. Um, I just want to also kind of give just a general overview of how, I guess, the pro scene in terms of tournaments uh, happened this year. You can see we're on Liquipedia, as I said. Uh, this is 2023. You can see, like, there's a lot of tournaments that have happened this year, but a lot of these are actually show matches. So the show matches were included in this um, this year's kind of tournaments. Um, whereas if you compare it to years like 2022... Although there's not as many individual events, uh, these all these aren't show matches. These are all actual like tournaments um, with a lot of people uh, being involved and a lot a lot bigger prize pools. So although it seems like there's a lot more, I guess, events that have happened this year, um, they're more like show matches and lower prize pools. So maybe although I do love uh, the show matches, I think maybe something next year we can work on as a community is maybe pooling some of this money into bigger tournaments and getting more people involved, which is going to bring more people to play AOE 3. It's going to bring more viewership. Um, and it'll probably just be better for the game. Um, and just having bigger prize pools, you know, it, it I think it's generally better. Um, so I think maybe that, that's something we can, we can have a look at next year. Uh, yeah, because we all want the game to grow and stuff like that. Uh, so what's next on my list? Uh, yeah, so let's have a quick look at like the patches that have happened this year. So obviously AOE 3D um, is still getting updates. Uh, like thank you to Microsoft for continuing to work on and support this game. We love you for it. Um, although some of the patches and balance changes and additions to the game have been a bit questionable, lots of bugs, lots of different issues like pathing, cards not working, um, we do really enjoy the constant uh, updates. So we had seven patches this year, including the one that dropped literally two days ago. Um, I just dropped a video on it as well. Uh, seven patches th this year, compared to last year in 2022, we had nine, um, as well as uh, two new sieves in, as a part of the uh, Knights of the Mediterranean DLC, uh, which also brought, uh, I think, a new game mode, the Tycoon uh mode brought new maps brought a lot new mate um a lot, lot more natives so although this year doesn't seem like it's anything compared to last year i would say it's actually been a very positive year of people kind of figuring out how a lot of these new uh de sieves work um which includes sweden and inca um and it's i feel like also been a year to focus for the devs to focus more on balance i'd say balance generally right now is a lot better than this time last year. This time last year, uh, if you guys recall the unit, uh, the Hakapelli, Hakapel for Sweden, I think that was raging at the moment this time last year. Fortunately, they did patch that. Um, but yeah, in general, I believe balance is a lot better. Um, of course, there's like different units, different strategies that are you just want to throw your computer at the wall. Uh, that's always going to be happening going to happen no matter what especially in a um asymmetric game like aoe3 um but yeah i think it's been a good year uh we're still getting updates which is which is great i just wrote down a few of the more notable kind of balance changes this year or uh, i guess events implemented into the game you know what i mean so firstly i want to talk about the walls uh now this dropped literally two days ago they're kind of reworking walls a bit. They're not really nerfing them. They're just kind of encouraging different ways to play with walls. Uh, so I won't really touch on it too much because I'm sure you guys have all read the changes anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be really interested to see how this kind of changes the meta. Are people going to go for still pillarless walls or are they going to um, decide to leave the pillars in uh, and I guess use that extra wood? Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see about this one. Uh, the next, I want to talk about the Skirmisher Multi versus Cav. Now, earlier this year, we there was a patch and the and Skirms, all Skirm units were actually, I believe they did, it was a lesser multiplier against Cav. And so they didn't do as much damage against Cav. I don't remember the particular number, but it was like 
75% uh, or 0.75 down to 0.5. So they did like 33% less damage to Cav. And a lot of people didn't like this because this hadn't been touched um, in the game yet, like even since uh, the vanilla days. So people were complaining that Skirms just didn't do enough damage to Cav and this was actually reverted, uh, I think two patches later. Um, so that's back to normal now, but uh, that was a very big change at the time. Uh, another probably big change is all the Explorer changes for the European civs. Now, every single Explorer for the Europeans now is like special in a certain way. Like I know France, they build TDPs faster. Uh, Germany, he heals faster. Um, of course, civs like um, Spain, um, they could make dogs previously. That hasn't changed. That's now their special kind of ability for the for the explorer. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd just mention that because now all explorers are different. Also, I wanted to point out that Microsoft seems to be kind of they're not going along with these like big events uh, whenever a patch drops. If you recall, when a patch drops, that often like spit out a whole bunch of challenges to unlock certain rewards like icons um, or like cheat codes, stuff like that. That doesn't seem to be the case anymore. I think the last one they did of these was in March. Um, but now they actually have a monthly challenge. And as a community, if you play us enough games, you unlock a really cool skin. So uh, although that is nice, it seems like, there's not as much effort getting put into these like community events, um, which is okay. I understand it's a, it's a business and they, they can't continue to um, just chuck money into this game. So, although we would love that, but uh, yeah, just wanted to point that out. Another big change that happened this year is actually free to play. So the game has become free to play to a certain degree. So, uh, you can essentially play the game for free, yet you'll only have access to three sieves at a time. And these sieves work on rotation. So each week there's a new sieve that you can play, and one of the three sieves uh, you can't play anymore. Um, so it just gives free-to-play players, I guess, just a taste of what the actual game is like. And I think this is actually really good for AoE 3. It brought in a whole lot of new players. I think it tripled our player count in the first week and uh, I'll go over some stats real quick, but uh, yeah, this, we can still see the effects of free to play happening right now. So we'll, t we'll look at some stats. Um, I have the steam charts up here. Uh, you can see uh, AOE3 uh, right now, there's 3.2 thousand people playing it. 24 hour peak is just below 5K. This is over the last seven days though. So we're gonna change it to this year. Um, so you can see we're averaging around maybe five to 6,000. And this is when free to play happens. Um, you can see it goes right up to about 5K. And right now we're sitting around, I wanna say seven, six to 7,000 on average. Um, and if you can look, you can actually look at like the, the decreases and increases in player count here. So we, in the month of August, when free to play got launched, we actually picked up about 3,000 players, um, which, yeah, 100,000, not 100,000, 100% increase, which is great. And uh, over time, uh, we've been losing some of those players, which is unfortunate. And I think they actually could have done free to play a lot better. Imagine if this happened. They dropped free to play uh, beginning of August. A month later, they release a DLC. That'll encourage a lot of those free to play players to actually want to buy the game and buy this DLC and, uh, they'll keep playing the game. Instead, um, there's been nothing, or there's been a few balance changes, um, which doesn't really incentivize uh, a free-to-play free -to -play player to actual, actually buy the game. So I think that's what they should have done. It's a shame that they didn't really have that, I guess, outlook for the game, but uh, that's okay. I also wanted to kind of compare AoE 3 against... Um, the other age games. Uh, so you can see green is AOE 3 here, uh, blue is AOE 2, and then yellow is AOE 4. And so this is over um, all, so the beginning of 2020 really. Uh, the release of AOE 4, they had like 
70,000 plays and then it's just dropped and it's actually uh, kind of sitting just in between AoE 2 and AoE uh, 3. Um, we'll go down to a year. Um, when AoE 3 free to play drops, you can see we actually peaked just above AoE 4, which was pretty impressive. Um, however, you know, with all updates, uh, the players drop off and uh, nothing really happens in the months after. So we've just slowly been losing a few players. Uh, for AoE 4, they just had a massive DLC as well. So their numbers are now actually ahead of AoE 2, which is interesting, even though AoE 2 got a DLC as well. Um, but uh, I think it's it's good that the other games are getting updates and getting more players because, you know, it's, it's probably good for the whole series, right? Um, if there's more eyes on Age of Empires just in general, on tournaments, um, on, yeah, new content, it'll just encourage people to maybe look at the other games. I know since buying AoE 3, I've actually picked up AoE 2 and I've played that a little bit. Um, obviously, AoE 3 will always be my baby, uh, but yeah, yeah that's, how it, that's how it kind of works. I think. Um, was I going to talk about this? Yes. Okay. So this is just another stat uh, for player count over the course of this year. Uh, this is actually, I think, probably someone from AoE 2, but you can see um, over the course of this year, it's comparing it to last year. You can see player count for AoE 2 has increased by 21%, for AoE 3, 47%, and for AoE 4, 82%. So this is just in general really good. Um, it's really good for the uh, for the, the game as a whole, um, Age of Empires as a whole. So yeah. Uh, what's next on my list? Ah, okay. So all the different websites. So some of our amazing community members have made these incredible websites uh, that have just been, I think, amazing for the community. The first one I want to shout out is a uh, free food parties um, website so this is like a discord community and uh they actually hired some developers to put together this amazing website and it's still getting updated and uh the developers are a part of the community as well so um it's such a great resource you can see there's lots of different icons at the top you could, you've got the free civ rotation here uh, that i was just talking about the last patch although i think this is the one just before um this was caverna's last tournament it was caverna combat 3 I think I said Caverna Combat 2. But uh, yeah, that's the last tournament. The Hall of Fame, which is nice. So that's got Beat the Boss and Caverna Combat. Uh, some content on YouTube and some, like a Twitch integration as well. This is just the homepage. Uh, you can go into uh, the leaderboards. Uh, you can see all the different uh, players on the leaderboard. Revnax got the top three accounts, <laughs> which is funny. Um, and this is not just for uh, 1v1 stuff. It's also for like, team games and treaty and whatnot uh they've also got like stats um so civ win rate um which is just generally really great really great to see and also across the different elo bands uh you can also see live lobbies so these are all the games happening at the moment and uh, you can actually click this kind of copy button and then in the spectate mode in aoe3 you can uh uh, paste that um, paste this and it'll find that game so it's really good if you want to just like spectate or cast any games some other interesting tools they've got a deck builder I'll just quickly have a look at this um, yep it's just loading okay might be a bit slow let me just refresh Hello YouTube, it's Future Lopsided here. Uh, I'm just playing around with the deck again and it is working A-OK. -okay. I think it was the issue on my end. I just needed to clear my cache. Um, but yeah, this is the deck builder. You can see you can uh, click on certain cards and it'll fill out in the deck. You can go via age. You can click different sieves, obviously. Uh, you can go random decks even. You can save your decks or you can copy them. Um, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, yeah, I've just copied it so it's going to load there we go and it's just save that um i also wanted to shout out uh this replay paja i think it's pronounced um but yeah this is actually something that was developed by uh jai also known as canyon giant 
um i i just asked him to give like a quick rundown of how this kind of tool works and uh he said let me just get it up here he said uh the replay parser is a tool that shows the information stored in a replay it shows the decks the build order the chat the map etc it works on many versions of the game including wrecks that went out of sync currently it's available on the free food party website so yeah this is a great tool i haven't actually played around with it yet but you can see you can insert your game there and i'm sure it'll load up a whole bunch of information here so that's um also really cool to know uh back to the video um obviously you have to have a tier list as well in here um and they just have the current map pool as well uh the next website uh this is dory's website um and similarly it has uh all the different civilizations and say if i want to click into spain i can see all the different cards per age it's just really great to it's just a good resource to see what cards are in the deck because uh if you didn't have this you'd have to boot up the game and then you know you don't always have your computer around um so he also has a i think a civ win rate kind of dashboard uh i haven't actually had a big look through here yeah there we go so civ win rate dashboard you can actually look at all the different units so if i want to look at arrow knight there we go i've just searched it up and uh there it is i can click on the stats and i can see um the unit stats itself uh the different upgrades i can apply to it and if i click on the upgrades it actually shows um the implications of those and the statistics here um or the the unit stats sorry so this is another great feature We've got um just a great resource in the community you can have a look at buildings as well obviously aronite isn't a building maybe if i just type in fort and have a look at all the different forts uh so yeah of course i'll link all these websites um down below as well uh another website is hell punches um website and uh similar to the other two uh you've got a leaderboard here uh you've got this kind of sieve win rate uh kind of dashboard um currently the ranked wait no 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 oh yeah so this is the ranked games going on at the moment i think this might be bugged it seems he said he was there were a few issues happening um but here you'll see all the current uh ranked games and you can spectate them as well um through that copying the link and then going to aoe3 these would be all the lobbies currently hosted um decks are coming soon and this is a link to dory's website so i'm pretty sure hell punch has actually provided a lot of this data sorry if you can see this fly buzzing around it's been really annoying um but as i was saying hell punch actually has done a lot of i guess investigation work and has pulled a lot of the data from the game files i'm i don't know how it works but uh yeah he's he's spent a lot of time oh my gosh sorry the fly is just buzzing around um but yeah he's been spending a lot of time on this um next i'll talk about actually the sun bros sieve grid so if you thought sieve win rates were good check out this so the sun bros some of the sun bros community um which is a discord sun bros is a discord i'm a part of it now, some of their community members have actually put together this amazing uh google sheets of lots of different stats um like sieve win rates um per elo band so i can change this to like 1900 elo and if i want to see how how goes into let's say lakota which i think is one of the least played matchups in the game you can see how wins about 60 percent of games um, obviously there's a small number of uh, games actually played at 1900 elo so it's not super accurate but uh it's a start and over time we'll just get more and more data um so it'll, it'll, it'll be become more accurate as time goes on uh and yeah they've integrated a whole bunch of other stuff i don't i won't even have time to go through all of this but definitely check it out they've got sieve scores there's a whole bunch of other tabs as well like um i guess win rates based on the time of the game per sieve uh 
uh, the average game time for each matchup. Um, what's this? A whole bunch of other different stats. Win rate difference for type of map. Wow. I haven't, wow, I haven't even had to look at all this. Win rate on all standard maps. Wow. This is incredible. Um, but yeah, definitely check that out. Uh, the Sunbros Discord is in my, um, down below in my, I don't know what you call them, comments. Um, but yeah, the Sibgrids uh, as a part of that Discord, so you can go check it out there. Uh, that's kind of it. Uh, at the, I just give a shout out to some notable players that I have kind of been looking at this year or have played with. Um, first of all, Julian K. Um, he's a German player, um, formerly a big treaty player, but this year he's been streaming a lot of 1v1 supremacy. Um, and it's just, it's great to see him play. Uh, the way he plays is it's so like strategic and purposeful and you really feel like, or at least me personally, I, I look at how he plays and I can learn things from it. So, um, yeah, I really admire the way he plays. Um, so yeah, shout out to him. Shout out to Shake just for everything he's doing for the community. Uh, he helped put uh, this website together. Uh, he hosted a whole bunch of show matches, um, and he's been a really great um, asset to the to the community. So shout out to him. Uh, wanted to shout out to Dennis because uh, honestly, whenever I tune into his stream, like his micro is just, oh, it's so nice to look at. And although he's not like a top 10 player, although he has broken the top 10. Um, his micro, especially with Hauser, um, is just, yeah, it, it, it's amazing to look at. And yeah, he's he kind of like defined the way Hauser players play the Civ right now. And so uh, I think that's also probably quite interesting the way he played it and then how that's kind of like gone down the ladder and how other players have played that Civ. So yeah, shout out to him. Shout out to Horsefeed as well. Uh, more of like a newer player along with me. Um, he's been grinding really hard, plays mostly Lakota. I love watching his streams. He made a Lakota guide actually, and it's super thorough. Um, that's on the ESOC website, go check it out. Um, but yeah, he's another up and coming player who's been quite, playing quite a bit and uh, yeah, good on him for grinding. Also shout out to my friend Lou, or also known as um, Rob. Um, He's also another up and coming player. I think, yeah, we all hover around, or me and him hover around like the 1800 ELO level uh, as of this year. Um, and yeah, just wanted to shout out to those up and coming players. All right, outlook for 2024. Um, I don't really actually have much planned for this kind of section of the video. Uh, maybe something I will mention is there is a winter tournament coming up at the end of this year, it was announced on ESOC, I think last week, you can maybe sign up now or next week, uh, but that's gonna be $750. And it's also gonna be like a legacy Civ. So not a legacy Civ, a legacy tournament. So you can only play legacy Civs, uh, which will be interesting. It'll be a nice change from a lot of the more lamer stuff in the DE Civs. Um, and yeah, it'll be on legacy matches as well. And uh, I think it'll bring a lot of people back to the game um, just to look at some of the games, see maybe some old faces return. I know Kaiser Klein is very excited. He's actually sponsoring a lot of it, a lot of it, I believe. So that's something to look forward to. Um, I think also something to look forward to is, is a lot more regular tournaments, particular, particularly hosted by ESOC. Um, I think they're trying to do like a, um a seasonal tournament um so once every three months so that's also something to look forward to uh what else can i mention yeah just kind of like what i was talking about earlier you know instead of maybe hosting like ten thousand show matches pulling maybe some more of that money into some bigger tournaments which i think will attract more people um maybe that's also something we can work on um but yeah, um, I'm keen for the next year. It'll be interesting to see uh, if how much more this game is going to be supported. Um, obviously, we can see there has been a slowdown this year. 
Are we going to get another DLC? I don't know. Maybe, maybe another DLC will actually be good for the game and bring in a lot more new players and returning players who try the game when it was free to play. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. But uh, yeah, let me know down in the comments what, what you think the year's been, anything I've missed as well. Um, and what are you looking forward to next year? Do you think we're going to get another DLC? Um, what Civ might it be, if so? Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. And uh, I will catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. And if you are still watching right now, comments and eat us. So I know you made it all the way. But uh, yeah, much love. Uh, catch you guys later.